Whatever the use is for lead, malleable, ductile, and resistant to corrosion as it is, it is universally axiomatic that if you try to get a lead balloon to fly, you will fail. Despite this, however, technically a lead balloon can fly. It has been done. All right, so it's, it's 9.31. He radioed in about eight minutes ago saying another 15 to 20, so he should come through maybe in the next 10 minutes at most. Get him in and out by 9.50, and then we'll get him on his way. Granted, it took considerable engineering to overcome its inherent qualities, but persistence and stubborn belief produced the impossible. A lead balloon lifting up off the ground, a delicate, misshapen spectacle defying the doubters. Oh, here we are, here we are, here we are. Right here, this is you. Hey, right here. We got you a My name is Jeff Beecham. I grew up in Indiana, fourth of five children, moved to Georgia, met and married my wife. We got pregnant. We have three children, two, four, and a seven-year-old. I'm in wealth management, so I started my own practice in 2010 and ended building that. I didn't know anything about fitness or uh, running, but the way that I got into all of this was started my practice and there was these guys I would go to the office after a weekend of doing really nothing and they would be talking about some race they did some half marathon marathon and it, it dawned on me I guess I should start doing something related to that so I just started signing up for whatever they were starting in. and after that I was hooked and when they moved on to ultras that piqued my interest and so I began looking at that Leadville's kind of been out there, you know, as they say, you don't find Leadville, Leadville finds you, and it found me. Leadville's a genuine blue ribbon gold medal mining town, always have been, always will be. We, we pull ourselves up our own bootstraps. 1982, I was an underground chef boss at the Climax Mine. Town was good. I mean, we had 5,000 people in this town, over 3,000 of them worked at that mine. And about that time, the phone rang, the boss from up above he walked in there and sat down and he said, boys, we're closing her down. Go home, we'll be in contact with you. Overnight, this beautiful 10,200 foot community of Leadville was highest unemployment in the nation. It wasn't good. We knew we had to do something to save our community. So that was, that was the birth of the 100 mile race. So will you stand with me now and say, I commit, I won't quit. I commit, I won't quit. Last year was a hard year. And when I got an email earlier this year from La Sportiva asking, is there anybody who would love to do this? We would like to tell a story. It never really occurred to me that I would be selected. I thought, let's just write down my story. Why are you here? I'm here to set an example for my children. I'm here because I committed to give this my best. I'm here to finish. I'm here to take another small step of reminding myself that I deserve to be here, that I'm worth it, that my past doesn't define me. That's why I'm here. Okay. 
looked at me from the outside when I was a child, you probably would not have observed anything spectacular. You likely would have attributed to my circumstances and qualities something like lead, limited in its usefulness and unlikely to be purposed to anything garnering acclaim. I grew up in a poor family of seven in the Midwest, and the year I was born as the fourth of five children, my dad made $13,800. Our family specialized in a particular kind of self-reliance, which, when applied to the parent-child relationship, amounted to emotional absence and negligence. I began working from an extremely young age, 13, 14, 15, full-time job, every dollar that I was gonna spend, whether it was for you know moving out of the house or college or whatever the case may be, it felt like it was my personal burden to bear to say, hey, if, if there's ever anything gonna come into your life, if there's ever anything that's gonna be good that is gonna come out of all that you're going through, it's up to you. And so, based on this unique upbringing that I had, I don't feel like I felt like I was loved and supported and, uh, and safe, but more like I had to scrap and claw to make it myself. in. I was out. An hour and three minutes I had a cutoff. I made it through May Queen and Dream Chaser hasn't caught me yet. That's something. I was accepted to college and commuted to school for seven years. I often had to stop classes to earn the money for the next semester. I like to say that I earned a double major in grit and determination. And those were the toughest years of my life. The climb was okay, the down was difficult. My feet are hurting, but that's not manageable. I'm trying not to get in my own head about times. Lead appears hardy and sturdy, but it damages easily and I was no different. Alone, scared, and on my own emotionally, I simply moved forward as best I could through my early 20s. After leaving home, I began to allow myself to look past the obvious and think about what might be possible for my life. As anyone who has tried to change knows, this does not happen all at once, however. Either with people or lead balloons. A balloon does not merely fly, but first becomes lighter and lighter until it escapes the pole of gravity. Similarly, I changed who I was by exchanging my past for life-giving new beliefs. It's a piece of cake. <laughs> I'm grateful for the crew that we have. I'm grateful for Justin and Andy and Kevin. Does it make you want to do one? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, it is. I was wanting to do one prior, and this just solidifies my desire to do it. <laughs> I came thinking maybe I'd do it someday. This is my first experience with all this, and it's, um, we're having a blast. No way. I have no interest. Zero interest. We've planned all that we can. We've laid it all out as much as we can. It's fine. Everything's fine. What needs attention? Uh, big toe, and then getting out of here. Is it ingrown toenail or is it the pinky? It's just my feet are killing me, and so I had to start. I had to start ibuprofen earlier than I wanted. I took one. It's okay. You're good. Don't worry about that. Hey, you're doing great. Yeah. You just stay focused, one foot in front of the other. You got this. Going up hook pass is going to be fine. You got that. Yeah. Just yeah. remember, you're going up, down, you're coming back here, and then we got you. Okay? okay. We're going to catch you. We're going to pick you up. Yep. You're going to have people with you from then on. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Five minute warning. Uh, no, 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 no. Hey, five minute warning. Okay. okay. Got it. Here five minutes. Gotcha. Five minute
Over the past year, I've become more and more resolute that it is time to turn from the past into my future. My family, my clients, and my future require it. I want to be a bridge from my childhood, my upbringing, to my children's future. I want them to have little to no experience with the emotional baggage that I took into my adulthood. It was during my self-examination of this past year that I came across the Leadville 100. The race is a journey that seems absurd, yet it is a journey that will test me to see what I can endure. Endurance events have always had a purifying effect on me. Although I am a completer, not a competer, I have never dropped out of a race and I've never given up. That's the one thing that I can be thankful for from my childhood. What I was most happy about was his mindset. He seemed really positive and, and determined. And I know if he gets back here, he's not gonna let anything stop him. So, fingers crossed. Here I am, top of Hope Pass. It is about 3.28, about 45 minutes before cutoff. Fitness needs to become a way of life for me, not just a diversion or one-off, because I want my children to learn from early on that perseverance can accomplish any goal and that they have what it takes. I want their earliest memories to be of their dad running and exercising and doing the impossible. It's a big year for me personally in many ways too. I experienced the death of my daughter shortly after she was born. She was diagnosed with an incurable condition called anencephaly, which means that she would pass away shortly after birth. Thankfully, my wife and I and our kids got to spend 84 precious minutes with her when she was born in October of 2022. When we got a diagnosis that Birdie had this life-limiting condition, it was a shock to our system because we felt like we had followed the rules, that we had done what was right and now we're being faced with this challenge of how are you going to respond how do you respond when hardship like this comes but i will say to my wife's credit to jessica's credit and to our marriage credit we never responded by saying why us because why not us we don't believe that good things always happen in life the reason this happened is because we live in a broken world. We are broken people. For me, sometimes the pain and the struggle of the run allows me to take some of that heartache and hand it to my physical nature as opposed to having to carry it emotionally. And so I get to process that pain and that loss and that hardship as I feel the pain of the running. These past events have made me who I am, but I feel like it's time to turn the page. It's time to fly. After all, I'm a balloon and balloons belong in the sky, even lead balloons. So I commit, I won't quit. This is gonna be an amazing night for Jeff. He is going to experience highs, lows, emotional crisis, and then he's gonna triumph. Yes, to be a champion. Can't wait to help him do it. It's gonna be a great story. Got into Winfield, I think it was 22 or 30 minutes ahead, and literally just ran in, filled the water bottles, and turned around and just ran back out because I knew I just didn't have anything to spare. One of the toughest parts of the day, seeing the people come down the trail who had kind of already done the math, and there's just tears running down their face. And it was a reminder again of gratitude, just that that I was still in the fight. I'm doing great. You look amazing. Yeah, man. You I got feel this, good. Sid. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Good job, I'll see you at the finish, buddy. Brother. That was the, the part that was just unknown if I had the fitness, the mental, 
fatigue was, was real. I've now doubled my longest, more than doubled my longest run. Justin, God bless you for doing this nasty work. <laughs> I love you, dude. Jason, what are you talking about? Fancy footwork. I yes. yes. love that one footwork. <laughs> Turns it on. Okay. You're, You're freaking amazing, you brother. <laughs> You're freaking amazing. Go. His ETA wanted to be 9.30, he got here at 9.37. His pace is exactly what he wanted to be. 6.55, so exciting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you can't make this up. Like, this is, this is so good. He's so a machine. Good. He's a machine. <laughs> His mentality, it's just one that doesn't quit even when it's hard, even when his body physically is telling him, you can't do it. He has something in his brain that just refuses to give up. That section was awesome. I just said, get on me and let's just go. And we saved minutes, we put minutes in the bank. That was great. He had a couple of rough spots. We had a little emotion, we had a little sadness, we had a little discouragement, but we got through it, we talked it out, and now he is, he is ready. He is like, this is, this is my race, I got this. All right. I'm good. All right, let's roll out. All right, we'll see you guys. Hey, Jeff, you got this. This quote by Teddy Roosevelt, and he says essentially something to the effect of the most meaningful life is not found in finding a life without pain or suffering or in ease. Water by water. You got clean waters. What else do you want? Sport beans? Do you want different? The most meaningful moments that you can have are by embracing the challenge and the pain and the suffering. I understand how presumptuous it is to do your first ultra at Leadville. This is a capstone for many people. I'm grateful for the example that he's setting for our kids that we can do hard things. And even through the journey of our loss, that there's still hope at the end. Some of the most meaningful things I've accomplished have been the hardest. And I've learned the most through some of my biggest failures. I want this to be something my children can look back on and get a glimpse of who their dad is and was.